Vamos a hacer una cosa, Mario. Sí. Yo, yo te voy a decir que yo estoy aprendiendo inglés y algún día seré una excelente guía en inglés. Pero por el momento tú me vas a hablar en inglés. Pero yo, yo, yo te puedo decir, eh, hello, Mario. How are you? Ah, fine, thank you. ¿Y you? I'm doing pretty good. Ah, thank you. Bueno, um, where are you from? I was born here in Bogotá, Colombia. Mm. Yeah. Y, y, ¿cómo se dice? ¿Hay, hay life? Uh, ¿Vives en? Oh, where do, where do you live? Mm, bien. Currently, right now, I live in Gainesville, Florida, in the United States. Bueno, uh, ahora sí, history de Mario. Ustedes se van a dar cuenta que aquí yo estoy, yo soy la que estoy aquí metiendo las de caminar, pero si no aprendo, pues bueno, algún día aprenderé, pero de eso se trata mi, tratando de aprender mi inglés. Entonces, my English no, no is uh, uh, good. It's a work in progress. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> bueno, Mario, cuéntanos para los eh, visitantes de mi canal eh, en inglés, ¿Quién eres tú? Lo, lo que hablamos el primer día en español y ¿qué es esa importancia de, de esos turcos que muchas veces ellos van a visitar al Museo del Oro, pero sobre todo que vienen a, a escuchar la historia aquí en la Laguna Sagrada del Cacique Guatavi? Okay. My name is Mario. Uh, I'm an artist and currently I'm a faculty. I'm a, a professor in sculpture at Santa Fe College in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, my main focus in my artistic practice would be dealing with 3D materials such as wood, clay, uh, and metals, right? My interest in terms of like the conceptual development of my work deals with implementing these materials as a way to continue on the legacy of, of our material culture in the territory, in the indigenous territory of, of Cundinamarca. And the question that I was asked earlier about Tunjos, Uh, what are they or what could they symbolize and how could they uh, we learn more about them uh, for me a tunjo is uh, for those of you who happen who are lucky enough to go to the museum of gold uh, you're going to find these figurines that represent people they're flat uh, usually outlined and made out of gold and so the tunjo originally Uh, was used as an offering uh, to make uh, almost like a payment. Uh, nothing is free, so we take things and now we have to give them back. And in this case, the Tunjo is what we give uh, back to the land. They were found in sacred areas such as in lagoons, uh, near rivers, or in caves. Um, and the Tunjo usually re represents an individual, uh, a person, um, although history It's, it's a little foggy of how, or maybe incorrect, on how uh, these objects were used. Uh, we have to kind of think about the context of today um, and the culture of today and how we, within the culture, are making uh, offerings. And so if these offerings uh, existed before, then what was the reason for them to be people? My thought is that if um, we create an offering that, rep that represents us as an individual, We're giving that that gift of of our time, of our image, um, to the lake, to the lagoon. And in this conversation earlier, it was uh, it was a a beautiful image came to mind of of imagining if we could continue to make offerings this way, what it would feel like to make a payment and give an offering of a tunjo that looks like you, and encounter all the other tunjos that were gifted and recognize people from your own community or from your own family. That's something that unfortunately we don't have right now because the Tunjos live behind glass in the museum. Thank you, Mario. Eh, mm, the Tunjos, the Gold and Copper, uh, symbolize uh, the Gold, uh, men. the Copper uh, and Copper is, is uh, the, the woman. Right. So there it's it's interesting because uh, what you'll see in the Museum of Gold or in a lot of these gold ornaments is not uh, when we talk about gold is not specifically pure gold in most cases. It's a mixture of gold and copper, gold and silver, and the gold and copper mixture is called tumbaga. Uh, and depending on the mixture of percentages, it's symbolic as well because it deals with the color and the, uh, 
the essence of what each metal represents. Um, curiously, uh, unfortunately, when the Spanish arrived and they found these objects that were looked like gold and melted them to find out they were predominantly copper in some instances, they felt very angry and betrayed and, and, and well, for the indigenous people it just didn't go so well at that point. Um, but the metals were important for its symbolic representation of the sun, the earth, um, and in some cases the moon, as the feminine and masculine elements. Mario, thank you. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, it's a, a history, beautiful. And welcome Cecilia from Dinamarca. Her the whisk, her my her is the whiskas. I I so whisk. Para mí, aquí estoy embarrándola. Pero yo quiero aprender. Pero puedo traducir si algo. Sí, a mí me encanta, pero es que yo. Sí, lo que yo les decía, yo, yo estoy repitiendo palabras porque aquí también estoy aprendiendo el inglés, ¿verdad? Claro, claro. Pero sobre todo estoy enviando un mensaje de una persona también que, que lleva, o sea, ese amor por la cultura muisca aquí en Sesquí, en Estados Unidos, que ha viajado. Entonces en el siguiente video, Mario, vamos a, a contar esa trayectoria, tanto en español como en inglés. Así que te invito a que les digas eh, en inglés que van a ver otros dos videos, uno de inglés y otro de español, donde vas a contar tu trayectoria y lo que haces y dónde te pueden conseguir si quieren saber más de ti. ¿Qué redes? Perfecto. We're going to be posting two videos, uh, one in English and one in Spanish, following this video right here, uh, in which we'll talk about the trajectory and where my path has led me and why I'm here in Sesquile right now. Yeah. Goodbye, Mario. Bye-bye.